And so astrotometry is proposing a conservation of three-dimensional space with respect to time. And so the matter-energy conservation relationship is extended through the hypersymmetry that is seen in time-space. And so energy and matter uh, can be transformed through time as well as through space. And so this is what we're seeing with the flux transfer event that has recently entered the uh, cognitive framework of the, the solar scientists, the contemporary solar scientists. And this event, this same type of event, is constantly happening. Um, the, the transfer event itself, what we're observing with this, with this symmetry, uh, this movement of matter seemingly from one place to another, is the inconsistency in the hypertime translation of the Earth through, through space. In other words, the concept for the way that matter moves through time in astrotometry is called astrotometric translation. And it's over the axis of the, of the, uh, the, the theoretical position that the photon is emitted or that that electromagnetic uh, elect energy is, is uh, derived that the space is folded with some sort of time symmetry, <clears throat> that there is a time symmetry through the space. And so this is, a, this is a more comprehensive way to understand the actual fabric of space-time. And the, uh, the, other, the other things that are, are supersymmetric in this way are things such as uh, hurricanes. Uh, you'll notice that the coronal mass ejection has a, uh, a component relationship to the, uh, to the cyclonic storm on the Earth. In other words, the, the tornadoes and hurricanes that we see uh, here on the Earth have hypertime shadows in the form of coronal mass ejections and that, that sort of emission on the, on the sun. And so there, if you look at the, the relationship between uh, the electrical movement, the, 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 the movement of an electrical particle and the magnetic component of the electromagnetic wave, there's a, there's a clue there as to how that relates to the very mechanisms of time. And so, and so I, I'm, I'm, I'm sort of fingering, or at least supposing at this point speculatively, that the magnetic force is intricately related to the mechanism of time. And so the, the, the movement of time itself, the movement of particles, the movement of the electron, I think has to do with an, a sort of uh, what would be uh, nominal electromagnetic flux. And so um, that, is, that is manifest in the way space and time curve and the way that we move through time and space. And so the, all of those three things um, are, are related very, very specifically in astrotometry. And it's the conceptual framework about what time is that has been divided into two separate things. In other words, I've taken what, what our normal concept of time is that has been abstracted um, or at least generalized incorrectly um, to include this uh, astral movement uh, and, and movement on the on the, 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 the level of the, of the subatomic particle, it's the same thing. And so astrotometry will apply, apply both to, uh, to the, the, the celestial cosmology and, and to particle physics. And so there's, there's a, there, there'll be a bridge there that differentiates the concept of time into uh, the chrono-differentiated motion, the motion that is uh, the effect of what would be nominal movement through time. In other words, in a, in a linear time movement, if, if in, in the frame that time is linear, there is a sort of movement through space that, that results. And I'm going to use the word time to represent the, uh, the, the the original Newtonian definition of time. In other words, time is going to be, in, in astrotometry, time is going to be reduced or qualified to the Newtonian concept of time that involves uh, measurement of distances and uh, relationships between changing things that are that are physical objects in the uh, in the, the planetary reference frame. So the Newtonian mechanics is 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 restricted to the Earth in its application, and what we perceive 
as the time is understood to be a consequence of movement through space with the hypertime wavelength. And so there's a there's a there's a hypertime wavelength that is responsible for the translation of a material object from one moment to the next that we perceive as the movement of time. Now that translation is not necessarily consistent. But that, that's abstracted in the third dimension because of our third dimensional condition. In other words, there's no way for us as three-dimensional creatures to, to directly perceive hypertime within our, our reference because, because of the nature of what a three-dimensional object is. And since every reference frame, every measuring device, anything that we can conceive to measure what would be hypertime is just going to be translated with the rest of rest of the world that we're embedded in, we have to come up with very, very clever ways to infer uh, the existence of hypertime and actually measure or calculate the hypertime wavelength. And this is part of what I'm working on right now, but I'm not going to present any of the any of the maths, any of the concepts uh, that are mathematical in nature for astrotometry yet. I think that you know, I don't know who said it, but once the math is done, it's all over. And so I'm still very much um, trying to sort out what is the best way to assign the variables, what is the best way to um, approach the problem and better qualify the concepts before I start trying to measure and, and number uh, things that might um, that might have a, a changing reference. Right now, I have about five different models, uh, maybe six. I don't know. I can't remember exactly how many I've got. Um, but the, the 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 issue is sorting them out and figuring out which one is more accurate. There's there's two of them. There's two classes of 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 worldviews that I'm that I'm trying to pare down right now. Uh, one one worldview is the many worlds worldview, and the other view is the morphogenic worldview. And and I'm not sure if they're actually separate uh, multiple worlds or if, if, there, if there's a single world that's morphogenic that has a changing past and potential future. But in astrotometry, there isn't a random, there isn't a probability. This is one of the, this is one of the, the things that I think a lot of the, the particle physicists are gonna love if they ever try to apply this to particle physics. And that is that it gets rid of that randomness that is uh, uh, associated with things like the Heisenberg uncertainty principle. Because in astrotometry, the, the concept of what is actually going on with that, that photon spin um, is, is fleshed out. The, the movement of time changes. The, ap the application of, of what time is changes because of the nature of the uh, electromagnetic wave itself. 